Hother. Hother, Old Norse, H. Othar, H. Thar, often anglicized as Hod, Hoder, or Hoder, is a blind god and a son of Odin and Frigg in Norse mythology. Tricked and guided by Loki, he shot the mistletoe arrow which was to slay the otherwise invulnerable Baldr. According to the Prose Edda and the Poetic Edda, the goddess Frigg, Baldr's mother, made everything in existence swear never to harm Baldr, except for the mistletoe, which she found too unimportant to ask, alternatively, which she found too young to demand an oath from. The gods amused themselves by trying weapons on Baldr and seeing them fail to do any harm. Loki, the mischief maker, upon finding out about Baldr's one weakness, made a spear from mistletoe, and helped Hothor shoot it at Baldr. In reaction to this, Odin and the giantess Reiner gave birth to Vali, who grew to adulthood within a day and slew Hothor. The Danish historian Saxo Grammaticus recorded an alternative version of this myth in his Hesta Danorum. In this version, the mortal hero Hother is and the demigod Baldaris compete for the hand of Nana. Ultimately, Hotheris slays Baldaris. In the Jilf beginning part of Snorri Sturluson's prose at a Hothra is introduced in an ominous way. Hothra is not mentioned again until the prelude to Baldur's death is described. All things except mistletoe, believed to be harmless, have sworn an oath not to harm Baldur, so the Ezra throw missiles at him for sport. The Jill beginning does not say what happens to Hothra after this. In fact it specifically states that Baldur cannot be avenged, at least not immediately. It does seem, however, that Hothra ends up in hell one way or another for the last mention of him in Chilfaginning is in the description of the post-Ragnarok world. Snorra's source of this knowledge is clearly Voluspa as quoted below. In the Skaldska Parmal section of the prose that several kennings for Hothra are related. None of those kennings, however, are actually found in surviving Skaldic poetry. Neither are Snorra's kennings for Vali, which are also of interest in this context. It is clear from this that Snorra was familiar with the role of Vali as Hothra's slayer, even though he does not relate that myth in the Jilfaginning prose. Some scholars have speculated that he found it distasteful since Hothra is essentially innocent in his version of the story. Hothra is referred to several times in the Poetic Edda, always in the context of Baldur's death. The following strophes are from Voluspa. This account seems to fit well with the information in the prose Edda, but here the role of Baldur's avenging brother is emphasized. Baldur and Hothra are also mentioned in Voluspa's description of the world after Ragnarok. The poem Voth Thruth Nismal informs us that the gods who survive Ragnarok are Vithar, Vali, Mothi and Magni with no mention of Hothra and Baldur. The myth of Baldur's death is also referred to in another Eddic poem, Baldur Stroimar. Hothra is not mentioned again by name in the Eddas. He is, however, referred to in Voluspa and Skama. The name of Hothra occurs several times in Skaldic poetry as a part of warrior kennings. Thus Hothra Brinju, Hothra of Burney, is a warrior and so is Hothra Vika, Hothra of Battle. Some scholars have found the fact that the poet should want to compare warriors with Hothra to be incongruous with Snorra's description of him as a blind god, unable to harm anyone without assistance. It is possible that this indicates that some of the poets were familiar with other myths about Hothra than the one related in Jilfaginning. Perhaps somewhere Hothra has a more active role. On the other hand, the names of many gods occur in kennings and the poets might not have been particular in using any god name as a part of a kenning. In Hesta Dan Norm Hotheris is a human hero of the Danish and Swedish royal lines. He is gifted in swimming, archery, fighting and music and Nana, daughter of King Jeverus falls in love with him. But at the same time Baldaris, son of Uthinus, has caught sight of Nana bathing and fallen violently in love with her. He resolves to slay Hotheris, his rival. At hunting, Hotheris is led astray by a mist and meets wood maidens who control the fortunes of war. They warn him that Baldaris has designs on Nana but also tell him that he shouldn't attack him in battle since he is a demigod. Hotheris goes to consult with King Jeverus and asks him for his daughter. The king replies that he would gladly favor him but that Baldaris has already made a like request and he does not want to incur his wrath. Jeverus tells Hotheris that Baldaris is invincible but that he knows of one weapon which can defeat him, a sword kept by Mimingus, the satyr of the woods. Mimingus also has another magical artifact, a bracelet that increases the wealth of its owner. Riding through a region of extraordinary cold in a carriage drawn by reindeer, Hotheris captures the satyr with a clever ruse and forces him to yield his artifacts. Hearing about Hotheris's artifacts, Gelderis, king of Saxony, equips a fleet to attack him. Jeverus warns Hotheris of this and tells him where to meet Gelder Youth in battle. 
When the battle is joined, Hatheras and his men save their missiles while defending themselves against those of the enemy with a testudo formation. With his missiles exhausted, Gelderus is forced to sue for peace. He is treated mercifully by Hutherus and becomes his ally. Hutherus then gains another ally with his eloquent oratory by helping King Helgo of Halo Galen win a bride. Meanwhile, Balderus enters the country of King Jeverus armed and sues for Nana. Jeverus tells him to learn Nana's own mind. Balderus addresses her with cajoling words but is refused. Nana tells him that because of the great difference in their nature and stature, since he is a demigod, they are not suitable for marriage. As news of Balderus's efforts reaches Hutherus, he and his allies resolve to attack Balderus. A great naval battle ensues where the gods fight on the side of Balderus. Thoro in particular shatters all opposition with his mighty club. When the battle seems lost, Hutherus manages to hew Thoro's club off at the haft and the gods are forced to retreat. Gelderus perishes in the battle and Hutherus arranges a funeral pyre of vessels for him. After this battle Hutherus finally marries Nana. Balderus is not completely defeated and shortly afterwards returns to defeat Hutherus in the field. But Balderus's victory is without food for he is still without Nana. Lovesick, he is harassed by phantoms in Nana's likeness and his health deteriorates so that he cannot walk but has himself drawn around in a cart. After a while Hutherus and Balderus have their third battle and again Hutherus is forced to retreat. Weary of life because of his misfortunes, he plans to retire and wanders into the wilderness. In a cave he comes upon the same maidens he had met at the start of his career. Now they tell him that he can defeat Balderus if he gets a taste of some extraordinary food which had been devised to increase the strength of Balderus. Encouraged by this, Hutherus returns from exile and once again meets Balderus in the field. After a day of inconclusive fighting, he goes out during the night to spy on the enemy. He finds where Balderus's magical food is prepared and plays the lyre for the maidens preparing it. While they don't want to give him the food, they bestow on him a belt and a girdle which secure victory. Heading back to his camp, Hutherus meets Balderus and plunges his sword into his side. After three days, Balderus dies from his wound. Many years later, Vuz, the son of Uthinus and Rinda, avenges his brother by killing Hutherus in a duel. There are also two lesser known Danish Latin chronicles. The Chronic and Lethrens and the Anal Londenses, of which the latter is included in the former. These two sources provide a second Uimarized account of Hothra's slaying of Balder. It relates that Hother was the king of the Saxons, son of Hothbrid, the daughter of Hadding. Hother first slew Othens, i.e., Odin's, son Balder in battle and then chased Othan and Thor. Finally, Othan's son both killed Hother. Hother, Balder, Othan, and Thor were incorrectly considered to be gods. According to the Swedish mythologist and romantic poet Victor Rydberg, the story of Balder's death was taken from Hustrapa, a poem composed by Ulf Ruggason around 990 AD at a feast thrown by the Icelandic chief Olaf Huskaltsen to celebrate the finished construction of his new home, Hardarholt, the walls of which were filled with symbolic representations of the Balder myth among others. Rydberg suggested that Hothar was depicted with eyes closed and Loki guiding his aim to indicate that Loki was the true cause of Baldur's death and Hothar was only his blind tool. Rydberg theorized that the author of the Jilfaginning then mistook the description of the symbolic artwork in the Hustrapa as the actual tale of Baldur's death. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.